Now, uh, Rotarians and guests, moving on to the uh, serious part of the meeting. It's my great pleasure to introduce, uh, as, to introduce Monica Oliver, who's going to speak to us today. And um, as it was recorded in the, the bulletin, Monica runs her own consultancy, Monica Oliphant Research. She's an adjunct uh, associate professor at the University of South Australia and a university fellow at Charles Darwin University. And she worked for 18 years for the electricity utility, ETSA, and uh, as a research scientist, and was president of the International Solar Energy Society in 2008, 2009. And she received an AO in the 2015 Queen's Birthday Honours List. And uh, this was in recognition of her work in renewable energy. And she was named uh, 2016 Senior South Australian of the Year. So she's uh, done very, very well, of course. She's also a patron of a crowd funding group um, called the Citizens Own Renewable Energy Networks of Australia. Now, Monica has participated on many Australian federal and state government committees and is currently involved in determining this is wonderful, the viability of a community-owned solar and energy efficiency project together with local government. In 2015, she was a team leader of a multinational group looking at the feasibility of establishing a United Nations university in re renewable energy in China. How about that for a, a challenge? Now, that was what was in the bulletin, but uh, this wasn't. In the 80s, when there was a an electricity trust and a gas company, Monica was championing solar hot water systems for ETSA and uh, yours truly was championing uh, instantaneous gas hot water services. And uh, we met during those years and uh, after a little while we became friendly and uh, we, what we did, we, uh, we were never really able, I think we have really convinced each other of the strengths of it, the both concepts that's the whole secret about energy in my view. There's lots of bits to it and they all should be used. Anyway, in later times we met again and uh, around the, uh, the board table of a very small company here in Adelaide engaged in um, researching and promoting energy efficiency on the customer side of the meter, the electricity meter and the gas meter. So uh, we're directors of that small company and I don't know what you reckon, Monica, but I think it's going to keep small unless we... Uh, lift our game. So uh, that was, uh, it's, uh, Monica's going to speak t today, she, uh, she's titled her talk a, a brief view, review of renewable energy and um, I'm delighted about that because we read so much about renewable energy from lots and lots of people, commentators and people who don't know all that much about it when it's all boiled down. Monica does, and it's my great pleasure to ask her to come and address us about that subject now. Thank you very much, Ollie, for your very kind words. I must say that uh, since being here and finding out that there are a number of utility people here, I'm getting really, really nervous. Uh, but uh, I do believe that gas is a good transition fuel. <laughs> so, I think how right I just get myself organised. That's good. And I, so I'm going to talk <coughs> about uh, give an overview, and I'm going to talk very quickly because I've got a lot to get through. I hope. Uh, overview of solar and wind technologies and the electricity situation in South Australia. So when I started about 35 years ago, solar was for uh, water heaters, solar cells for uh, satellites and uh, uh, wind for farmers for pumping uh, water and uh, small bits of electricity. Now, of course, uh, we still have uh, solar water heaters for roofs which is the best glasses. I think it's the other ones. Uh, and uh, uh, the uh, 
uh, unglazed solar water heaters for pool heating and evacuated tubular collectors are a, a, a sort of a new form. They were developed by Sydney University, commercialised by China, uh, China and almost exclusively built in China now. Uh, New types of uh, integrating solar water heaters into buildings can be modular, but that's predominantly for European countries where you can see the panels going in because they're vertical. And so in summer here, when the sun is vertical, they wouldn't really work. But uh, in the northern hemisphere at angle, they do. And, uh, but if you put them on balconies, uh, evacuated tubes, and most of those are high rise in China, uh, they can work uh, that way. Oops. So I come now to uh, wind. Uh, originally, wind were these awful lattice uh, towers, uh, 50 to 150 kilowatts. Uh, that's in California, that top picture. Below is California uh, again. They morphed into more elegant looking uh, uh, wind generators, but that's pretty crowded uh, one. Those ones down the bottom are about three megawatts, and that's about the workhorse that is often used in uh, wind farms now. Wind farms can be offshore and onshore, and the offshore one at the top is uh, uh, in Sweden, and I was there a few weeks ago, so I've put a little picture showing that I was actually at that wind farm. It was really very nice. In South Australia, our first wind farm was on Starfish Hill, uh, 35 megawatts, and uh, the one below is at Jamestown, which is now 300 uh, megawatts owned by AGL with a 180 megawatt uh, gas turbine nearby. I'll say a bit more about Jamestown later. The largest wind generator that has uh, been built so far is 8 megawatts and it is usually used, uh, it is going to be used mainly for offshore because offshore you don't want too many uh, wind generators for maintenance and so it's better to go big. So this one is uh, 140 metres to the uh, um, to the tub height with 220 metres to the tip. So I put in a picture of the highest building in Adelaide which is uh, the Westpac House which is 131 metres which is less than the hub height of the this wind generator so they are enormous devices and a picture below with a helicopter over a five megawatt wind turbine. They say that on the drawing boards are 10 megawatts and they might even go to 15 but I think they will be really big beasts I don't know if they'll ever get much higher. Uh, the PVs uh, Photovoltaics based on silicon is, is the uh, technology that is growing the fastest these days. It, they can be in small uh, solar farms, large ones, floating on water, uh, used on houses, pumping uh, water in remote areas. And they can be either stationary or tracking. Tracking, you get more of the uh, beginning and end of the day, but then uh, more, much more expensive and things that can go wrong. So usually these days because uh, PV is coming down in price you just add a few extra panels uh, angled uh, into the east and west. And the concentrated uh, PV which is down the bottom on the right um, are, are, are struggling to uh, uh, be in store because they're just too expensive. PV can be integrated in, uh, to buildings in architecturally different ways. Uh, this is uh, in Dezhou, China, Solar Valley. And uh, I've stayed at the bottom building, which is a convention centre. Uh, and it's quite a striking building. You can also integrate on all sorts of commercial buildings. In there is a stadium, Walmart, at the, all Walmart stores have PV and a, a railway station in Shanghai. And on the bottom left is the one megawatt system at the Royal Adelaide Show. PV can also be used as a whole lot of small things like um, 
uh, street lighting, and down the bottom is, uh, I don't know if they're still there, uh, is the festival centre uh, lights, and they can be used for charging uh, stations in public places, lighting in the outback uh, for camels. Uh, and uh, those women there are models uh, modelling PV in clothing. I'm not too sure where the cables go, but, and I'm not sure what it's used for, but it's being looked at in all sorts of different things. And the final technology I'm going to talk about is uh, concentrated solar thermal. Uh, solar thermal can go uh, for the flat plates and the evacuated tubes up to 100 degrees with slight bits of concentration down the bottom on the uh, left is a Fresnel uh, parabolic concentrator. They uh, focus uh, solar onto uh, absorbing tubes, usually have thermal oil through it and uh, uh, the hot oil goes to a boiler which runs a conventional steam generator. And as the concentration uh, increases, uh, you get higher temperatures and with a power tower uh, even higher from 500 uh, uh, onwards and the big dish uh, from, uh, can go to even higher temperatures. So here's some pictures of solar thermal power stations. Uh, on the right uh, top is parabolic troughs, on the left is uh, uh, in Spain and uh, down the left uh, the two there uh, are one of the largest uh, solar thermals in the US. That doesn't have storage and you can see who the sponsor is and down the bottom you, uh, solar thermal can co-fire with natural gas or it can have its own storage in usually uh, uh, salts, uh, hot, uh, uh, hot salts, and uh, that can produce steam to run conventional uh, the steam turbines. At Port Augusta, they're looking to uh, install, uh, if they get, get it, uh, solar reserve have got a, uh, a dual... <coughs> PV and solar thermal plant, which they have uh, installed in uh, Chile uh, for a, a copper mine. Uh, the, it's a good idea to have uh, both PV and uh, uh, solar thermal with the mirrors onto the uh, tower because uh, the PV is cheaper. The solar thermal, though, can have storage, and this one has 14 hours in uh, thermal salts. And, uh, uh, and because it's a traditional uh, steam turbine, it can have what's called uh, uh, real inertia and can help uh, stabilise the grid. So I come now to uh, uh, Australia. Over the last uh, 10 years or so, wind and solar have grown at a terrific rate. The graph on the left shows that wind started up... Um, I do have to change glasses. Uh, started up uh, around about 2004-05 uh, and grew steadily. Uh, PV grew as a result of the feed-in tariff really fast. And right now, and these are quite uh, recent figures, South Australia has 32.8, almost 33% of households have rooftop solar and uh, commercial companies are starting to increase as well. Oops. Um, in terms of uh, wind, South Australia in just over 10 years has gone from a penetration and South Australia is the black bar and uh, we have the other states you can see how much the penetration of wind compared with uh, other states has grown uh, in the state. We now have 50% of, of our uh, generation is wind, 7% uh, rooftop solar. So we have 57% of our generation can come from variable renewables. The rest is predominantly natural gas plus the interconnector, which is about 650 megawatts. And that 
interconnector can ca cover about 30% of peak load, whereas in Denmark, that also has 50% wind, it uh, covers about 80%. So it's grown really, really fast, and that has created some problems. Uh, in terms of what the uh, PV is doing to our load curve, uh, the top curve is um, uh, 2009, the bottom 2015, and you can see how uh, on an average day, uh, PV has uh, impacted on our load curve, and they say that uh, within 10 years on a low load day, uh, probably all of the uh, daytime load could be covered by PV. And of course, when the sun sets, uh, the load goes up because there's no solar, so you need flexible load to cover that awesome storage. So I'm going to talk about three uh, special days that have uh, been uh, uh, around uh, and over the last year. So I'll start with July the 7th, uh, 2016, which was a low load day. And the situation was a low wind speed day, rather. And there were low wind speeds, only about 5% of demand. It was a peak uh, winter load day, but theoretically plenty of supply to cover demand, including uh, so, uh, the interconnector. But on that day, uh, the interconnector was uh, constrained due to planned maintenance and upgrade. It was a strange day to have uh, uh, um, maintenance. And gas prices, and on, on the top, uh, you can't see the caption, it is spot gas prices. Uh, and they are, the yellow is uh, 2015, and last year 2016, green, and currently uh, this year is the red. So at the beginning, in July, when this situation occurred, uh, the gas prices was high about three or four times that of uh, normal. And the most efficient gas turbines, the French NGs at Pelican Point, were mothballed because uh, operation wasn't cost effective. This just left AGL and Origin to provide uh, uh, demand with 80% of supply, of which uh, AGL had 60%, and they decided to game the market, which is quite allowably commercially. Uh, the uh, ACCC says uh, that's okay. So what that means is um, uh, gas uh, generators are bid in at five-minute intervals, that's dispatch, and uh, settlement is over a half-hour period. So they bid in at $50 a megawatt hour, then withdrew supply. Uh, there wasn't enough uh, supply to cover demand. They rebid in at $10,000 a megawatt hour. And so uh, they kept on doing this for a number of hours over the day. And the gas generators earned about $178 million in net margin on, from the spot market in uh, July, which the uh, those companies that took the spot market, were, uh, the high industrials weren't happy, and they say that this will have a flow on to the uh, hedges. So what happened in the newspapers was that the newspaper says, business blows up as turbines suck more power than they generate, which is all nonsense. And uh, uh, energy price reveals folly of new renewables. Nothing about gas prices or uh, uh, about uh, ga gas generators not being uh, available. It was all blamed on the wind. So I come now to the, uh, uh, our uh, blackout day. On the day before, uh, the Bureau of Meteorology predicted high wind speeds. They turned out to be even higher than uh, predicted, but uh, AEMO takes their, uh, uh, their, their uh, predictions not from BOM, but from another source, and uh, they scheduled the generators as seen on the right. Half of the generation was from wind, the interconnector was almost fully loaded at 613 megawatts. It takes about 650 or so. 
and there was just 18% from natural gas. Three out of four of the transmission lines were lost, 23 towers down, and 456 oh, megawatts of wind didn't ride through the voltage disturbances. So when you have a volt, um, each wind generator and all generators have ride through um, uh, settings. And those wind generators that had high wind uh, uh, settings that could ride through more than six disturbances were fine. Those that were low weren't. Now the wind generators uh, didn't seem to know what their settings were, and nor did AEMO. This has all been uh, uh, rectified, but on the day, there wasn't all that much knowledge of what the settings were. were. So the uh, 456 megawatts uh, uh, went down, the interconnector got overloaded, uh, everything happened within two minutes, so not enough time for uh, extra gas to be put uh, online, and so there was a blackout. Uh, then to start up from a black star, you need some fossil fuel generators to start it up. Those generators that were allocated to do that actually didn't work, and so the, the, uh, uh, it had to be fixed by the interconnector. Since then, there have been four reports by AEMO, and they said that intermittency wasn't a material factor in the uh, events. But of course, within, 20, uh, within an hour, there were a whole lot of uh, uh, condemnations on wind. And uh, they even showed pictures of bent wind turbine blades, but not one wind turbine fl uh, fell over all their uh, bent uh, blades. And finally, the rolling blackouts ordered uh, and the heat wave of uh, the 8th of February. Um, on that day, uh, there was a forecast of, uh, by the BOM of 42 degrees C, but again, AEMO did not take that forecast, they took their own. And so demand was higher than forecast because the temperature was higher. Wind generation was, that day, lower than forecast. Thermal generation capacity was reduced. Uh, they had problems with the heat too. And, uh, uh, and uh, part of Pelican Point was unavailable. So SA Power, uh, so AEMO asked for 100 megawatts of shedding of load uh, for security reasons. And, uh, I just put, put New South Wales there because New South Wales had some uh, uh, events where they actually ra uh, came on air to tell people to turn things down so that there wouldn't be any problems. That did not happen in South Australia. So there was a SAPM software problem that meant 300 megawatts instead of uh, and 90,000 customers were shared instead of 100 megawatts and uh, 30,000 customers, but power was restored within 45 minutes. And you see the graph at the top, you can see the dip that that caused. Now, my comment about the 100 megawatt uh, uh, battery, uh, because uh, load shedding of 100 megawatts, if we would have had a battery that was dedicated to peak loads, that would have helped in that situation. So it doesn't have to be really, really big uh, to help, but the battery that is being installed is 70% uh, for the uh, government, for uh, ancillary services, uh, a frequency and voltage control, and 30% for uh, grid operations. Uh, in future other batteries and other storages, which we should have, will be able to uh, uh, be, uh, provide some valuable service to the grid. And uh, there was 525 megawatts of rooftop solar during the day, which at the time of shedding was 160 megawatts. So it uh, produced some use, solar produced some useful things. But with uh, uh, the comment from uh, the, uh, Simon Birmingham was, 
Yet another example that South Australian government can't keep the lights on, it's a chronic failing that can only hurt investment confidence in the state. So you, you get a whole lot of uh, a talk that is a little bit misinformation uh, with regard to renewables. So to conclude, and I will read from here, uh, because of the rapid pace of technological change, we don't have multiple years anymore to get the system right. And that's uh, from the new uh, AMO uh, CEO. We do have to, uh, change is going to come. We've got to manage it. Uh, and people shouldn't put their heads in the sand and, uh, and not do anything. Uh, what we want is a reliable, cost-effective, uh, uh, secure system, uh, regardless of what it is, and renewables treated properly will be able to produce that. So the South Australian experience points to the need of increased diversity in generation mix. We mustn't just have the variable renewables and gas, and, and diversity in ownership so people can gain the system and probably settlement over five minutes instead of half an hour, increase interconnectors, increase penetration of storage such as pump storage batteries and solar thermal that can produce uh, both uh, 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 real uh, inertia, the synthetic inertia is called, uh, is from batteries or inverters from uh, uh, wind farms and to determine how much the, of each the grid can handle. Need a flexible network so when the sun or wind goes down uh, it can be taken up with quickly operating storage or others and have a coordinated system plan uh, which we're starting to get what should have been earlier and this is essential, and uh, just say we ought to have bipartisanship, not criticise South Australia, help to make it work, and be proud of what's happening in South Australia. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Frank. That leaves us uh, five minutes for questions. Isn't it refreshing to hear a few facts? Okay, yes. Adriana? Uh, thank you, Monica, for the uh, wonderful presentation. Um, I was going to ask about your feedback on, obviously, the announcement this week uh, of the battery storage, and I think it's very positive regardless, so I got the, that feel from your presentation. So the next question is still to do with that. Will, obviously, it seems that our uh, energy requirements go at their you know, maximum when we've got the seat waves, and my feeling is it will also affect batteries. So if you go there, um, an explanation of how, I mean, do, we know that what they're gonna install here is three times as big as what, it, what has been installed anywhere else in the world at the moment. Is anywhere else been installed in conditions like ours where the heat wave might come with 47 degrees and maybe in the location 50 plus in a closed environment, will the battery will be able to deal with that at the installation? Unfortunately, I don't know how, uh, how effective uh, lithium ion is with temperature. There will be, I believe it can go up to 60, but I don't know what the drop-off in uh, uh, efficiency uh, will uh, be at that temperature. But we shouldn't rely on just uh, uh, batteries. We should have a range of different storage options, like, say, pump storage, and they're looking at near Wyala pump storage using seawater. But that's going to take a couple of years to build. Thank you. Chris, did you have a question? Yes, thank you. And thanks for your enlightening address. I think it's answered uh, a lot of questions. Um, it's very unfortunate, I suppose, inevitable, that uh, uh, this argument becomes very political and it is overstated on either side yeah. of the, uh, the parliament. Uh, I think that the, the government has overstated a lot of the things that it's done and the, the opposition has, has uh, got things wrong equally in the other direction. Um, <coughs> my question though is something else. Um, there is understandably perhaps a lot of confusion in the press about 
about the terms that are used. Um, and uh, battery stores energy, which is measured in kilowatt hours. So energy kilowatt hours <coughs> compared with kilowatts, which is power. Does the new battery, which is commonly referred to as a 100 megawatt battery, is that capable of delivering 100 megawatts, or does it store 100 megawatt hours? Um, I believe it is. Uh, say a hundred. If you a hundred mega, it can supply a hundred megawatts for one hour, or two hundred megawatts for a half an hour. I don't know how far down it can go. It might be. But it is, uh, sorry to interrupt, but it is a it is a measure of the energy store. Yes. Thank you. Yes. I've got another question down the back there. Yeah. I'd like to ask the question is, with the batteries, how long will they last and what is the replacement cost? Because I find that you cannot get that information on cars when I was overseas. Um, I did read that uh, Elon Musk said that those batteries will last for 15 years, but, they're, but by the end of 15 years their performance will be down to about 85% of what it is now. And so there will be uh, perhaps a, a, a sort of phased replacement of uh, 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 during uh, 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 the time. And I can't tell you what it will cost. And hopefully, as the time goes on, it will get cheaper. Thank you, uh, everybody. Look, I, we've come to the... Oh, sorry, Peter, we might have to ask you to come and see Monica after. She's going to be here for... A few minutes to answer questions we didn't get to today. Would you uh, please Rotarians um, help me in thanking Monica very, very much for her time today. <laughs>